And the way to put Boom Zeal on the map is to show them that, hey, this one brand, which spans across right now four portfolio companies with an infinite runway in making the process of maintaining your property more manageable, that's why we exist. Hello there and welcome to a brand new year of the My Future Business Show. It's so wonderful to have you back with us. You know, it's been great to have a few weeks off actually because it's a, a time to reset, refresh, spend some time with family and friends, all the things that I think are important in the world. But on today's show, I have the pleasure of welcoming entrepreneur Phil DePaul and we're going to be talking about how Boomzeal Enterprises makes maintenance more manageable. We're also going to take a deep dive into the operations of the business and how values, customers, Customer service, teamwork, and leadership play an important role in the future growth of the business. Now, that all being said, Phil, there's lots to unpack here, but welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me, Rick. Looking forward to uh, our chat today. Absolute pleasure to have you here. Now, um, where are you calling in from today? I'm calling in from Long Island, New York. Long Island, New York. Now, I know that you uh, must do some sort of travel, but is that home for you? Uh, Long Island, New York is home now. I was actually born and raised in the forgotten borough of New York City called Staten Island. Staten Island, yeah, no, I hear so much about that. Now, what did, what do you remember about growing up? Oh, what do I remember? Well, first thing that pops up is sports. Uh, I was always active, you know, yep. hanging out with friends, pick up anything, you know, football, basketball, whatever it was. Uh, so when I think of my youth, I definitely think of activity, being out and about, and uh, and family. Always the commitment that my parents had, my sister, and us doing a lot of things uh, as a core four. Yeah, absolutely love it. Now, this is where I think uh, the My Future Business is fundamentally different than most business-focused shows because we take a bit of a deep dive into, you know, your life, basically. So tell us a little bit more. What are, what are some locations and landmarks that people may know about where you live? Us. Uh, landmarks yeah. uh you know well in long island new york we are an island and we are long so we have beaches on the north we've got beaches on the <laughs> south <laughs> uh i actually took to swimming uh, a few years ago and uh, i have not been doing it uh quite as much but nothing like a nice open water swim out here in the waters if you want landmarks from my childhood uh tottenville high school wagner college and uh you know the mean communities of village greens on the south shore of staten island now, I know that uh, you have a love of pro wrestling. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I would say that that love has died or faded. Oh. Um, so, but but when you look at my youth and my childhood and the influence that professional wrestling had, uh, I'm a Hulkamaniac to this day through and through. So, Me too. you know, the Hulkster shaped my my youth, definitely was my first idol. And and probably to this day, if I thought about it, he probably is the is still the top of the top rung of the ladder. Yep. Uh so professional wrestling, great form of entertainment. And at the end of the day, you know, boys will be boys. So oh, yeah. the physicality of fooling around and doing body slams and all that stuff, <laughs> it was Suplex. pervasive. It was pervasive <laughs> in uh in my circle of friends. And you know, we would fool around. We eventually started our own backyard wrestling federation. We were it. on public access television. Uh, and then I, at the same time, I took that hobby and turned it into a um, an obsession in ways because at this time, I have over a thousand VHS videos from the archives of the WWF no and WCW way. from my collection. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, I used to love the passion when they used to give the interviews with the bald guy. Can you remember the bald guy giving the interview? What was his name? Do you remember? Uh, the broadcaster? Yeah, no, the guy who used to interview the Hulk and the rest Me of them. Mean Gene? Yeah, that's the guy. Oh, that's yeah. the guy. It's like, and they would come up to him and go, yeah, we're ready for the next fight. Here we go. Oh, I loved it. No, you're, I'm a fan. How could you not feed off of that? No. And look, I tell you what, um, it, it doesn't take – doesn't take much to get you excited. Next thing you know, I'm, you know, body slamming my kids and also. <laughs> I'm ready to rumble. I don't know about you, Rick. <laughs> now tell me, what else do you like to do with yourself? Do you enjoy a movie? Do you like music? What's your thing? Oh, man, I am not that interesting. I mean, unfortunately, I love to work. Uh, I really do. I love doing what, what I do with the people that are around me. Uh, I, I'm very family oriented. They probably say that I don't give them enough time. Uh, I used to be uh, a major athlete on my own, not not professional, just I'm a competitor by nature. So physicality, I've done triathlons, CrossFit competitions. So I've always been looking for ways to challenge myself. But uh, since I had my son four years ago and started uh, officially jumped into entrepreneurship around at the exact same time, that just doesn't fit in. So now we're just uh, building communities uh, one, one at a time in our organization. And I try to carve out some uh, family time. 
I find that um, having children personally gave me a, a real sense of purpose. Have you found that? Oh, yeah. It opens up a whole new side. You see the world a totally different way, heart outside the body, for real. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, do you find it uh, a challenge when you have to go away for the day? Because I found that personally myself, I'd love to be around my kids all the time. Or is that not your thing? You'd prefer to hand it off? I, I think that there's a there's a fine balance that I'm made for. Uh, what I noticed is that as much as I love my son, if I had to spend all day every day with him, I wouldn't exist anymore. <laughs> so I think there's a healthy balance where we all appreciate each other. And I do my best to give him and my wife their share. I love it. Uh, but he definitely takes the lion's share. Thanks, Phil. Now tell me, um, as we're growing up in those formative years, we often have people around us, call them inspirational, if you will. Did you have anybody around that, around you when you were growing up that really sort of set the scene for you growing into a young man? Yeah, I mean, I mean, so many. If you look right in my household, my my father was always the the example of of blue collar, hard worker, do anything yep. for your family, rough around the edges, tradesman. Yep. My mother, the ultimate caretaker, literally. So I, I'm so blessed in terms of the upbringing that I had. And then from from outside of that, you know, you learn things. I think that you learn things positively from some things and and, and negatively from some other people yeah. uh, in terms of what to do or what not to do. So look, the Hulkster, we talked about him earlier, right? You want to idolize someone, <laughs> say your prayers, eat your vitamins, yeah. athletes, always a big sports guy. So Patrick Ewing was a big idol of mine uh, and whatever New York uh, sports icon was, uh, was big at that time. Mm. If you, if I look outside myself in terms of influential factors, whether they're authors or thought leaders or mentors. I love to point to Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Of course. And uh, Michael Gerber, the E-Myth. Oh, good, you wanna, yes. If we're going to tap into my entrepreneurial spirit, like yep. pre-21 years old, yep. those two voices, the paradigm shift that I went through, uh, definitely set me up for the path that I'm on now. Now, tell me, you just touched on the fact that your father was a tradesperson. To me, as a tradesperson myself, I find that they are the salt of the earth. Now, we seem to have, I don't know about in your location, a shortage, or it seems to be uh, lots of kids nowadays are steering away from it because they've been told that there's a better option out there. Be an influencer, get online. What do you think of that? You know what? I think to each their own. Yep. However, when you when you look in perspective, uh, so when I was in my teens, someone in the wholesale plumbing wholesale industry that I spent 14 years growing up in, uh, which my father set me up as my first job because he's a 40 plus year um, veteran of mm -hmm. the New York City Plumbers Union. And I was told everybody's got a shit shower and shave. And yep. you know what? Not sexy, but totally functional. So to this day, if you look at the trajectory of, of my career and my life, it's always tracked kind of these uh, unsexy, boring businesses, so to speak. But but guess what? Everybody needs a plumber. Absolutely. Everybody needs a contractor, yep. electricians, right? So when it comes down to the trades, until we figure out a better place to live than inside of a building or a yep. structure, uh, guess what? There's always going to be uh, these guys. <laughs> Absolutely. I love that feedback. Thank you so very much. Now, given that you do look after yourself, what's a daily routine look like for you? Are you up early? Do you have an exercise regime? What's your thing? Yeah. So I, I am getting more structured here in 2024, mm -hmm. but for four and a half years uh, on this journey of being a father and a, and a serial entrepreneur, structure is something that I've seriously been lacking, especially in 24 seven emergency service businesses that I'm sure we'll touch on at some oh, yeah. point. Yep. But where I'm at right now is focusing on uh, gratitude, being a student of my calendar. Uh, I am an early riser by trade. Uh, so is my son. So you could imagine that he eats into some of that window of opportunity. He's He's been the biggest variable in setting that, that okay. schedule. But you know what happens? The more I find that physical energy is and, and making time is only part of it. But the mental energy that you have to allocate towards a, a regimen, um, anything that is additional inertia on top of the innumerable initiatives that I'm always pushing for myself, I've had to just kind of prioritize and Sometimes you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself, of no, which uh, I haven't always taken that advice. Now, I know that uh, you seem to have a very busy mind. You seem to be uh, highly intellectual. Do you give yourself permission to have relaxation time? I'm not good at it. No, I can tell. No. So <laughs> relaxation is one thing, recharging. And people recharge in different ways. And I've, I'm, 
day by day, I'm learning just a little bit more about myself, my mind, my body, and getting into some healthier habits in terms of setting myself up for success for the next day, uh, really trying to find those small wins each day, focusing on the priorities and and really the priorities in your life. Like for me, family is where it all starts. Because if I lost them, but I had all my businesses and was making money hand over fist, guess what? Yeah. That's not really success. So just trying to center yourself. Um, and that's sometimes that can recharge you and be okay with not conquering the world in a day. I'd love to just uh, step back through time a little bit and, and look at your path to this point in time. You're a business owner. Um, do, tell us a little bit about, I guess, your educational experience and your professional uh, background. Yeah, so I'll try to fast forward through it. I mean, yep. from my youth, I always wanted to do things. In fact, that's one of my reputations. Phil likes to do things. So uh, <laughs> idle hands kind of do the devil's work. And I was always put myself towards something. You know, my first gig was a, a newspaper route when I was, I don't know, 12 or 13 years old. And going back to my father and the integral role that he played, like I couldn't go pick those up. I couldn't deliver them by myself in the rain. So it very much was a joint venture. <laughs> and I did that for many years. And then I spent 14 years inside of a wholesale uh, plumbing uh, business, yep. the supply side, plumbing, heating, boilers, HVAC. So you'll see some of the, the commonalities with how I wound up where I'm at. And I grew up inside of somebody else's business. So I got my undergraduate degree from Wagner College. Uh, I got it in computer science because at two, in 2002, I mean, you know, uh, technology and computers were at the forefront. So I knew that you had to be there. That, that degree didn't really teach me much, much. If anything, my minors of math and economics speak more to who I am, how I'm wired. Yep. Uh, definitely a numbers guy and data driven. I like finance. I like business and, and being able to kind of carve my own path yep. in someone else's business and help them grow. I ultimately, I, I love the people I work with. Uh, and I took to the industry, even though I didn't particularly care for it. I didn't choose it. Right. It wasn't, I found passion in it. And through that, I, I like to say I got my MBA growing up inside of someone else's business. I was never able to really make it mine and, and, and be an executive. So I had to make a move because I'm extremely growth oriented and my grow or die mentality, I was on a path where I was dying. So I hit a ceiling and I, I jumped into a construction management program and it was a uh, administered on behalf of the governor's office of storm recovery here in New York. So after Hurricane Sandy did a ton of damage, particularly to the South Shore of Long Island, I jumped in on an existing program called New York Rising, helping uh, mostly single family homeowners that were devastated by the storm to either repair, rebuild, or elevate their homes with grant money and a whole bureaucratic process that had good intentions. But as you could imagine, anything that sort of is governmental regulated comes with some bureaucracy, bureaucracy and inefficiencies. And ultimately, um, I love that experience. I work with some awesome people, subject matter experts from all over the place. And I got intense clarity because I always wanted to have my own business and I still didn't have my big idea as to what it was going to be. I looked into franchising and that kind of is what set me on to, uh, you know, the first leg of my journey and, and taking that, that leap on my own. Yeah, now that can be fairly significant steps forward. But out of all of this, what do you think is the one skill set that you you have that uh, you do the best, better than any, any of the competitors? You, you know, lately the, the word belief comes to mind. I yeah. have an incredible intensity towards once I set my mind to something, giving it everything and then some. So when I commit, I I, I commit wholeheartedly, so I always say no half measures. No half measures. Now, tell me, um, what got you into property management? Now, if you, I guess a better way to approach this is um, explain Boomzeal and I guess the service suite that it provides. Sure. So Boomzeal didn't start out as what it is today. Boomzeal was kind of a, a made-up adjective that I felt started the conversation to represent me in a brand name. Um, so the concatenation of those two words, I say, boom, zeal, you know, it's essentially, I feel like when I, as I said earlier, when I apply myself to something, you know, that something happens. Uh, I don't, I don't do things lightly. Yeah. I'm not delicate. I'm not into beating around the bush. So boom, zeal, you know, think uh, a jolt of energy, a catalyst for change, positive change Makes sense. Uh, in others. Uh, at least that's the intent. So collateral damage comes with the, with the territory, but I incorporated my business 
called it Boomzeal Enterprises. And then I said, okay, great. What are we going to do? How are we going to change the world and uh, put food on the table? So I launched a franchise. I invested in the United Water Restoration Group fan franchise, uh, a young growing franchise based out of Florida, of which I think I was the ninth franchisee. So their system, their model was, was definitely in its infancy. And I knew that. And I kind of liked the idea of getting in with a brand that was looking to grow very much like myself, you know, win-win alignment with what we... Um, uh, with the paths that we were on, success for the franchise should mean success for the franchisee and vice versa. And yeah, nothing like jumping into a 24-7, 365 emergency response building uh, <laughs> uh, business where you're cleaning up water damage, you're remediating mold, uh, you're abating asbestos and dealing with fires and smoke damage and all that kind of stuff. So I saw the opportunity to help people. You know, it was that simple. Yeah, it was that simple. Great explanation. Thank you so very much. Now, I, I wonder, um, in all of this, uh, tell us a little bit about, I guess, the family of brands. And I've also seen you uh, on other shows um, building that brand awareness. You're you're on a mission. I can I can tell that's for sure and certain. Tell us a little bit about that part of your business. Yeah. So, I, I mean, my my initiative, my vision goes very far and wide because, as I said earlier, I'm just allergic to to having limits imposed upon me and my life. I don't mm. want there to to be any kind of boundaries. So when it comes to making a difference, uh, United Water Restoration was very limited in that we had to wait for something to happen before we could uh, provide our five-star service and mm. add value to what they do. So I needed to find ways to meet the client, to meet our local community, the people who want five-star service in other ways and say, hey, how can how can we increase that value proposition? So this boom zeal movement, right, which what I like to say is that we are a who organization. We're focused on our core values and why we exist. And the platform that we wish to apply ourselves towards is, like you said earlier, the process of of making home maintenance more manageable. And we did that first through emergency response services. And then, you know, you kind of reverse engineer like who you are and how you got there based on the path that you take. So going into construction, going, uh, acquiring a junk removal and light moving business. And ultimately you see me rocking the pink and black right now, yep. the one Tom Plummer brand, because who doesn't want to know an emergency plumbing service that will show up anytime, anywhere to help save the day to work in conjunction with if you have the problem of water damage or some associated issue. I mean, the, the synergy between the two just makes so much sense. So right now in the here and now, focused wholeheartedly on, on building this brand in the Long Island market. And the way to put Boom Zeal on the map is to show them that, hey, this one brand, which spans across right now four portfolio companies mm -hmm. with an infinite runway in making the, the process of maintaining your property somewhat more manageable. That's why we exist. And, you know, that's our value proposition. And, and in terms of where that takes us, uh, I say that our core purpose is something even higher, which is to energize communities by uniting teams through empowering leaders. So when you look at why we exist and how we choose to apply the resources that we have and the amazing people that, that have come to believe in this cause, it's bigger than just uh, the plunger. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I've had this thing, you know, I've always, you, you talked about who doesn't want to know somebody like this in these services. When you need them, you absolutely need them. And it come to mind, Boomzill, the first in your phone. That really stands out for me, you know, because, uh, you know, you want to be in that position. So anybody's on this call today and you're listening to this, make sure that you check out Booms. And we'll be providing the links back to um, the business uh, links and so forth uh, later in the show. Now, you touched on service a little earlier. Uh, Phil, I'd love to talk about how important service is to you. I know you've spoken about it on other shows. Yeah. So where does, you know, where does service emanate from? Ultimately, we're all consumers, right? Mm, you yeah. bought, you bought products, goods and services. I bought goods and services. I'll tell you what, when I bought my house, I didn't, I didn't know uh, how to do anything in theory. You know, I'm a handy person, but I'm um, not the best at doing any one thing. And there's so many variables and factors yeah. that you just, it wouldn't it be great to know that someone is behind you looking out for you and can guide you first rather than just trying to separate you from your money, but was focused on you trying to curate an experience that provides the value and the service that you're looking for while feeling like you've got extra bang for your buck, like someone's like like someone cares. And, you know, as an entrepreneur, there's a lot in the trades. There's a lot of 
call it Chuck in a truck, you know, one man in a van where they're going out and they are the service provider, the brand all in one. But guess what? You can't scale that. Mm. So you you can only serve a limited audience. So when I jumped into my restoration business, I was the the water sucker. I was in the truck. So even though and, and I had a vision because from day one, I referred to myself as the CEO because I wanted to make it crystal clear that I did not start a business because I want to be the brand and because I wanted a job. I want to create opportunities for other people through service. And, and ultimately that vision, even though it wasn't clear, you know, it was very, very foggy. <laughs> I just knew that there was runway and people started to believe in me. And it was like, oh, well, I'm going to, now I'm, it's compounding. Now it's I'm happening. believing more in myself. And when you get other people alongside you who are like-minded and, uh, and infuse themselves, guess what? Boom Zeal started as a me thing. And now it's a we thing. So the best way to serve others is if you if you do it with intention and getting other people to want to do it with the same, if not more, intentionality and energy, then you can blow the doors off anybody from a service standpoint because there's no such thing as perfection. But our number one core value is accountability. So you know what? We're going to do our best. We're going to be solution oriented. We're going to be uh, resilient in the face of of solving problems and, uh, and we're going to grow. So I just kind of, in that statement, I kind of rattled in our, yeah, our core values yep. because at the end of the day, they speak to me and they spoke to the, they speak and continue to speak to those around us and ultimately value through service. It's just it's the, way it's it the name of the game. Yep. Absolutely. Great feedback. Thank you so very much, Phil. Now, I know that uh, as an organization grows, um, it's very difficult to maintain process control. So tell me a little bit about the importance of standards and process control and procedures and the likes. You know what? Ask me in 365 days because this is our year <laughs> of operational excellence. Yep. Uh, it's not easy to scale one business at a time. Try doing it with four. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so, so processes, procedures, and the consistency, the, the habits, behaviors, and activities that that have made the McDonald's type of brand so successful, right? Think about these chains that they do it, do it, and do it over and over again. Well, uh, that's the thing. We want to. We have to produce that five-star client experience every single time. And just because Phil did it and he's done it, well, he was controlling it. But then the team gets bigger and the team gets bigger. And how do you maintain that same level? Well, that's the challenge. And I guess uh, lucky for me, I love challenges. <laughs> so you know, we are we're using we're leveraging franchises to uh, to use their secret sauce of yep. which one Tom Plummer fantastic culture that comes with a, a strong SOP and support system. Uh, so we, we, we try to learn from all these different businesses and these different experiences, take the best practices of the best practices, and then use them and leverage them in each vertical business that we operate to provide the best experience. And it's that compounding that, you know, we're starting to see as we're getting more and more intentional about, oh, this person does this great and that person does that great. Well, what if we took the best of this one, the best of that one, mix it up in a pot, and this is just how we do it. And then we're, you know, we're developing the boom zeal method and and trying to uh, to really deliver on the highest level of our value proposition while being consistent and owning up when uh, we fall a little short. Businesses in the 21st century um, are surrounded by technology. What part does technology play in your business? Yeah, I mean, you can't scale, grow, and and be dynamic in what you do and how you learn and how you evolve and improve if you don't have the data and the and and the information in a in a means where you can consume and have access to it virtually anywhere and anytime. So. Without leveraging a, a platform like a job management system and or CRM, you know, that's that's power. So knowledge is power. It's got it. And, you know, everyone says garbage in, garbage out. Oh, so yeah. it's so important to catalog what you did and take the verbal and the actual in the real world and digitize it because it those are the breadcrumbs and the and the path that you've blazed in the past and you got to learn from those and you got to leverage those and you have to do it through information and the systems that house the information are critical in fact right now we're implementing a, a new platform that is going to be educational based where it's multimedia from video to text that will help us um, also be 
multi or bilingual with how we communicate those processes and procedures to new hires, existing hires to reinforce and leverage the, the best practices that have made us successful and keep iterating on that. So you need, in, in my opinion, you know, the, the pen and pad are wonderful, but yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, you can't, uh, you can't scale it and share it with the magnitude that you want, you want with someone to. who has a vision like we do. Thank you again. Now, I, I wonder, I think about this from, uh, you know, an ex-operations manager myself, and I think, wow, there must be lots going on. There must obviously be other dimensions such as licensing and then that sort of thing. How do you keep up with that side of things? Oh, the compliance side can be brutal. You know, you <laughs> want to go serve, you want to go save the day, you want to provide value. And then it's like, oh, Wait. insurance, <laughs> licensing, permits, fees, audits, taxes. So, man, uh, Busy. After starting up four different corporations, that is the thankless part of the entrepreneurial journey for me, where you got to do it. It's like the blocking and tackling. You got to stay with it. But there, there are people who love it and, you know, try to shift those responsibilities onto people who are really good at it. I've been hazed where there's certain things that I've shouldered the load for and I've done on my own uh, as we've gotten started. And I'm, I am extremely happy to delegate some of those tasks. And, you know, we believe in Jocko Willink, extreme ownership. So whoever you delegate those tasks for has got to own that, you know, got to protect that baby. And those things, you you can go be the best service provider and, and do your thing. But if you don't keep up with those, uh, crossing those T's and dotting those I's, guess what? You're not going to be around tomorrow. So uh, that's, that's all it. I can say about that. Now, I tell you, um, work culture is obviously a massive thing for you. You are the leader. You are the brand representative, essentially. And how is it that you get your team to follow that sort of same suit? And, and, you know, in terms of building a great work culture. Well, that's a challenge, right? Mm. You've got to not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. So when it comes to exuding and living our values, I want to be held to the highest standard. When it comes to creating clarity around our purpose, our focus, our mission, I have been forced, like, it's funny, you mentioned your, your operation manager uh, mm. experience. And I've very much always been kind of a behind the scenes guy. Like I don't need to be the front man. I don't want to be the, the centerfold. Like I don't need to be in the spotlight, but you know what happens? The bigger your vision gets and the more that people buy into it and ultimately they buy into you or they buy into the other people that are around you yeah. and they want to be a part of it. Um, you have to grow and you have to push yourself into that discomfort zone. And what I have not been afraid to do, and I can say this openly and honestly, and I failed so many more times than I think I've succeeded, or we just have these mini failures that iterate and they compound into helping you evolve into who you want to be. So uh, one of the frameworks that I love is I hear Alex Hormozzi, who's one of my presidents. Alex Hormozzi. Oh my goodness. My president, <laughs> He's amazing. He says, you're the hero of your own story. Like, or, uh, you know, who else? Matthew McConaughey said that said this in one of his uh, award acceptance speeches to if your your hero should be you 10 years in the future and the journey the adventure that you're on has to be worthwhile in order for you to become the hero of that story so what do you have to endure and go through to um to reach those heights or those levels and then just keep pushing those goalposts out but celebrate those small victories along the way so with that i've always struggled with gratitude and ultimately it starts with myself i don't do i'm not big on patting myself on the back oh great phil you did this it's always just like what's the next thing on yep. to the next thing with it. sometimes you got to pause and be like today was a good day that was a good thing progress you know uh so as a perfectionist by trade I have been working to let that go years and years and years. And I'm really proud of the progress that I've made to say that put progress over perfection and just keep moving the needle a little bit, a little bit farther each day and try to encourage other people to do that day by day. Because if you try to take giant leaps at a time, you're setting yourself for avoid setting yourself up for avoidable disappointment. So what I'm trying to do, uh, and we've had these quarterly all hands meetings where we gather everybody together, all the organizations, the whole Boomzeal tribe, as we call it, and try to center them around what is the message? What is our, our focus in this next 90 day sprint? And what it does is it, it puts the it puts the, the cross on my back to say, you got to be intentional, you got to be clear, you got to be concise. And that's me trying to do my best work to enunciate on behalf of, you know, almost 30 people that are that are daily performers in our business, 
that, hey, we're on the same page, we're aligned, this is who we are, this is what speaks to us, this is where we're going. And yeah, it's been it's been great. And having conversations like this where I get to represent this tribe, this brand and, and what it is and how far we've come and how infinite the runway ahead is, that's that's who I gotta be right now. Very you gotta exciting. Leave from the front. Very, very exciting. Thanks again for the feedback. Now tell me a little bit about how it makes you feel when you see um, services rendered, people happy, Tell us a little bit about, you know, that satisfaction you must experience. I mean, that's the big why. You know, when you really see that that the service you provided, which, you know, might be necessary, but if you can create wow moments where you're, where uh, a client or a person's expectations are exceeded, that should always be the goal. Like you set the, you set the benchmark somewhere, but you always want to raise the bar. And I've used, I use that phrase all the time internally about we've done great work so far. It's time to raise the bar, raise the standard. And, and I can't do it myself. So I have to help inspire and motivate our people and our team who want to do that for themselves, if not for the client. Like, you know, take pride in what you do. And so many of our of our team members do that. And I love I love when I see the five star Google reviews just come flying in and they say Mike was fantastic and Benny is the man and Caitlin is the best. And I mean, these are the things that I'm like, yes, I'm happy for you in delivering that five-star yep. experience yep. and getting noticed for it. Like that's how I win. So I can only win through other people right now. So tell me a little bit uh, as we get nearing the uh, pointy end of the call, uh, Phil, wrap up the list of services um, that uh, Boomzill provides and how people can make contact should they need to uh, find out more. Yeah. So we spent some time talking about the big why, why we exist and, and who we are. And right now, the ways, the what's that we express those values uh, and our reason for existence are 24-7 emergency services for water damage restoration, for you know late night cleanup, sewage, the, I say dirty, disgusting, and dangerous. We are masters of the insurance claim process. So when it comes to helping you navigate the insurance loss, what do I do? Who do I call? How does it work? We excel at that. That's our sweet spot. That's what we do. deal with all day, every day, from the moment the thing happens until you're fully restored and then some. Uh, junk removal and moving, right? It's Again, it's not sexy, but there's a lot of stuff out there. Stuff needs to be moved. Stuff needs to be recycled, donated, and sometimes scrapped. We're in the remodeling business. So here on Long Island, if you want the open kitchen concept, give us a call high-end bathrooms, um, kitchen cabinetry, remodels, renovations. That's what we love to do. Working with interior designers, you know, making your dreams come true. And as you see, uh, the one Tom Plummer brand, we are, Tom is the highest standard of the highest standard of plumbing services. He doesn't sleep 24 seven drain cleaning, leaks, repairs, fix it all. That's what we do. So looking forward to the next thing and the next thing. But right now, our core focus is uh, those five star experiences in these brands that we uh, that we're rocking. Fantastic feedback. Great call. Now, if you're on today's call, you want to learn more about uh, Boomzoo and, uh, and the enterprises inside of that group of, I guess, businesses, I'll be making sure to uh, make the links available to you below this post. No matter where you see them, you're going to be able to find the service that you are looking for. But with all that being said, Phil, great call. Thank you very much for joining me on the My Future Business Show today. Thank you, Rick.